Hello and welcome to the DSO Imager channel. My name is James and today I'm going to go over uh, processing uh, HDR images in PixInsight. Now on some targets that we image they may have areas that are so bright uh, that it's very easy to overexpose and the Orion Nebula M42 is a perfect example and probably the most popular or famous example for this uh, type of problem. So what you can see here right now on my screen is uh, two different stacked images of M42. The one on the left uh, is a luminance channel uh, using a luminance filter with my ZWO ASI-294 and my AT-115 uh, and it's 60 second exposures. And so you can see here that the trapezium, this is clearly blown out. I mean, this is, this is linear. This is not stretched. There's no stretch at all. In fact, if I stretch it, you know, uh, with an auto stretch, that's what it looks like. So straight out, you can see that this area here, even with just 60 seconds, is blown out. Here's a stack with 10 seconds. And so the trapezium's in good shape. Actually, the, the, the four main stars in there are a little bit overexposed, uh, but uh, still not bad. And if I stretch this, I mean, it looks very similar. So with it auto-stretched, you can't tell that the core is overexposed on this one. But if you try to process this uh, and get any kind of detail out of the trapezium, you're going to see that uh, you can't you can't do anything when these pixels here are maxed out. Now, in this example, I'm using uh, data from my mono monochrome camera, but this same process works perfectly fine with uh, with one-shot color cameras as well. Uh, you just want to get some short exposures and longer exposures, right? The longer exposures is so that you can add a significant amount of time and pull out all that uh, faint dust in the background and the short exposures is only to capture really the the super bright areas. I mean you could just go with 10 second exposures for example but you would need thousands of them and that's just not really practical on, on for most people. So there's a little bit of prep work that you have to do. And basically what I did here, everything down here in this corner here, this has all been cropped and registered and dynamic background extraction has been run. So again, if we stick with our luminance, there's our 60 second exposure. It's a, a around three, a little over three hours worth. And then this, I mean, 10 second exposures, I think it's like maybe 10 minutes total. And we're still linear. And so what you do is you save these because the HDR tool uh, in PixInsight, you need, it needs to load up the data as a file. You just can't drag and drop these images in there. And with LRGB, you have to do it for each for each, uh, each uh, filter. So I want 120 seconds with red and then 20 seconds for the short exposures. And you can see that 20 seconds looks pretty good. All right, so let's go ahead and open up. What we're looking for is HDR composition. add our files and so I'm going to go with the luminance for this example and you want your longer exposures on the top that's a pretty important step there now the default settings work really well uh, so I almost never have to make any changes here and then we just hit our action button and let it run now it'll take a moment here so I will pause recording and I'll be back when it's finished. Okay, uh, the process just finished and what you get is you get an HDR image and you also get a mask 
and the mask can actually be pretty helpful if you're wanting to you can use this in your uh, processing with curves it's nice to have have this here so you can see this HDR image what was ex uh, overexposed in our 60 second now looks looks much better and if we auto stretch that I mean so auto stretched it doesn't look too different right but the difference is now when we process if we dial this back here so that we can pull out or, or I should say reveal some of the details we're gonna actually be able to see the details as opposed to this so I mean that's that's really it that's uh, doing an HDR composition in PixInsight so where, where do we go from here well at this point you would just process this like you normally would process so what I'm gonna do now is pause the recording I'll go ahead and create uh, HDR images of each channel and then we'll run through some quick processing steps okay so I went ahead and created the RGB HDR images so we got them right here uh, next we'll create a color image we're gonna skip luminance you can see I've already already got it in here HDR for red green and blue we'll hit that action button and here we go so you can see the core is not blown out again the stars are a little bit blown out but at this image scale I'm not too worried about it and if we just apply an auto stretch that's what we got so next I'm gonna go ahead and process the luminance uh, channel all I'm gonna do uh, for this video is I'm just gonna run deconvolution and I'm gonna pause the recording while I do the deconvolution if you're interested in seeing how I do the deconvolution I have a video on my channel that's uh, specifically on running deconvolution so I'm just gonna run through the same steps that's outlined in that video okay so deconvolution is complete uh, these are the settings that I ran and I'm just gonna make a copy of this and minimize it and now next we need to stretch the color image and the luminance before we uh, recombine and for this video I'm just gonna use the um, the auto stretch uh, it actually looks like it's working pretty well and it'll be quick all right so these are both stretched now now one more thing we need to do is we want to blur out the color so I'm just going to go into noise reduction multi scale medium transform we disable all the layers just like it's shown here and drop that on our color and what this is doing is this will remove any uh, uh, colors so that when, when we combine the luminance we're getting all the detail from the luminance and we're getting any excess color noise. Yeah, these images are drizzled so they're pretty large image files and it's uh, taken my computer a little bit to chew through them okay there we go so we're blurred and now we go back to the LRGB combination tool and this time we disable all channels except luminance drop that on there and apply that Okay, so there we go.
So now normally I would just uh, do a lot of curves work and, and maybe play with uh, Unsharp Mask a bit, but we have to do something about this core. I mean, we don't really need to. Uh, there certainly is something appealing about seeing this bright, hot center in there. But if we want to get reveal some of the detail that all our effort that we went through with the HDR composition, uh, we'll need to do something here. So let's first make a mask. And I'm just going to use a range mask for this. And we just want that really bright area. That might be too much, but we'll see. Ah, that's pretty good. The mask is still there. I'm just hiding it. Now we can just go to curves and pull this back all the way. And you can see, I mean, we're not blown out there. There it is. <laughs> but boy, that really gives you uh, uh, an idea of how uh, broad that dynamic range is. So there's a couple of different ways we can do this. Uh, we can try um, multiple range masks and kind of step down. Or we can try using uh, some other tools in Pixinsight. One such tool uh, that we could use is the HDR multi-scale transform. Now this isn't a tool that I use too often, um, but it can be really handy for uh, pulling out some details in brighter areas. Uh, but it's also a very uh, powerful tool in the sense it's very easy to overdo it and end up with some really artificial looking results. Uh, this, uh, this setting here, let me reset it. Uh, so this number of layers, this is your main uh, lever that you're using to adjust this. The smaller the number here, the more of an impact you're going to have on the image. Uh, and I actually was playing around with this a little bit. And for this particular image, I had to lighten it up quite a bit. Um, and the result that I got was this here. So see, it kind of unmasked some of that really bright center. We can see the four main stars in the trapezium. We can see a little bit more in there. Notice, though, that um, there's definitely a sacrifice uh, with the color. Now, the color is still there. Like, so the mask is still here. And if I pull back on curves again, I mean, you can see that there is color there. But we're still, we're still fighting that dynamic range. Maybe we can do another iteration, or we can do uh, uh, another range mask. I mean, really, I just want to have this area here so that we're not darkening this. So I might try that really quick. And I mean, this is what makes uh, M42 such a challenging target. It's, for so many people, it's the first target because it's easy to find. And it's so bright. I mean, you can even get nice pictures in heavy light pollution. So it's a great beginner target, but is it that that dynamic range makes it an extremely challenging target and I mean there's not a whole lot up there for an amateur astrophotographer to deal with I mean this is the worst offender there's a couple others out there that can also present a challenge but not not like M42 and you have to be careful not to go too aggressive if you go too aggressive then I mean this this area looks nice but it's not the transitions too rough so I at least like to try and have it subtle the other thing is I don't want this area to get too I don't want to dim it too much because then it doesn't um, it looks out of scale uh, with the rest of the image Maybe we can put some of that color back by increasing saturation here. So I mean that helped a little bit. 
Now, if you saw my uh, first light with the AT-115, you know that I had already processed this image. And, uh, and the way I handled this in that one is I just used a bunch of different masks. I didn't even use the, uh, uh, the HDR multi-scale transform tool. So I'm going to pause the recording here again, and I'm going to just uh, play with this on curves. I don't want to record this whole thing because this video would be like an hour long if I did that. And I'll just uh, show you the final result, and we can even compare it to my previous uh, attempt and uh, see how I did. Okay, so I'm finished with uh, tweaking it, and this is pretty much what I ended up with. I did a couple of additional masks. Uh, you can see them over here. And I did some work in here, and uh, I think it came out all right. Now, I, this is really a quick job. I didn't remove stars. I didn't spend additional uh, time slowly working on it. And there's another couple, uh, another thing that's very different from my previous process. The, I had very, uh, very little time on this, and the luminance relative to the color wasn't that much. And what I had done on my previous processing is I combined all the color data with the luminance data and made it into one big uh, luminance file. And I think in the processed image, you can definitely see a difference, a difference there. Uh, so let's just do a quick comparison and then I'll wrap this video up. I'll move this to a different workspace and let me copy over the previous work. Yeah, so definitely a completely different color. Uh, this one that I just did is a little bit on the blue side, a cold, colder look. And you can definitely see more dust in here, but I don't know which one's actually better. It's a, it's a personal preference on the color. Uh, sometimes this uh, bluer, colder look is more appealing, so I don't know. Anyway, the main focus of the video was working the HDR, and um, I hope uh, some of you guys found this useful. So, as usual, uh, like and subscribe if you're not subscribed already, and uh, clear skies.